like many of you, I spent a little time with this uh, Iris demo from Isotope, which is really super cool. It's pretty easy to just click around in a sample like this, you know, and do some crazy stuff like this and come out with some pretty neat sounding stuff, or at least different than <laughs> many other synthesizers would give us. But this is really spectral synthesis, and it seems kind of strange. You know, we're looking at this big screen of weird color washes, and what does it mean? I think it's so easy to click around that a lot of people never really dig further and find out exactly how this works and how they can take complete control of this and do specific things that they would like to do, just like they do with other forms of synthesis. So this video is to help walk you through that really quick and also show a couple different approaches to using spectral synthesis in a couple different apps. To start with, we're really looking at a field of information, just like when we'd look at a waveform like this. We have, let me clear that up actually so it's a little cleaner. So we have time going left to right. And just like on our waveform, on our spectral image, we're showing time from down here on the left, over here to the right. And somewhere along this field, a series of time will occur, probably seconds. And up and down, here we're showing amplitude on our waveform. Generally, you could have, you know, say, 0, negative 6, negative 12, on down to some inaudible level. A little bit different with spectral. We're showing it here too, but down here is the low end. This is the very, very low end on the bottom, and the high end is up here on the top. And I think this is best described if I clear this sample away and load in uh, a kick drum. And what you see, this is just, uh, here, let me play it for you. Let's see, the root is C2. So, pretty unexciting kick drum but just a kick drum from a loop. And you can see where there's more frequency information going on on the kick drum, it's a brighter color. And where there's less, there's a, lo a lighter color. And here in the middle, it's just black. What you can surmise is that black means no sound or no amplitude, and white means maximum amplitude or sound level. So you're gonna get more sound wherever you've got it white. And let me illustrate really quickly. If we pick our brush, and I choose only this section to be audible. Now we get really low end stuff. But as I paint higher, you'll hear more and more. Of course, there's nothing up here to really show. <laughs> In a kick drum, there's not a lot of frequency up here, but you can see that uh, the, higher, the higher we paint, the more we get. So if I paint just up here, you're only gonna hear the high end of the kick drum, which sounds pretty cruddy. And you can move the selection. And get that change. If we look at something with a uh, higher end content, like say uh, a snare drum, drop that in right there. Let's look at that. Here again, you can see where the snare hits occur. And if we just choose one of them and select some of this content again, there's its low end. And as I add more, getting up into its high-end content. And if we start from the top, it's just its high-end. We're adding back in the low. You can choose what frequencies you want. You can see where it's strong as it goes across. If you only want, say, these frequencies, you could do a cleaner selection with these, uh, these lasso to selection tools. I'm just gonna do this for the sake of being quick. So we get that one set of frequencies across the entire sample. So this is sort of like a bandpass filter. We've just chosen certain frequencies to allow through. And if you invert it, now you get everything but those frequencies. Let's clear this again. And this time I'm going to add the complete drum loop here. One I got from, uh, <laughs> surprisingly enough, from Funkbox on my iPad. You may recognize this loop. So there's the whole thing. If you wanted to do, we're talking about this like a filter with high and low frequencies. If you wanted to do uh, something, say, like a filter sweep that went from low to high, we could just let's do a really cruddy super paint-in job here because it's fun. Painting with a mouse, right? That's always 
any of you who also do graphics know how ridiculous it can be to paint with a mouse, but it's really fun. Here we go. And surprisingly effective if you just stick with it. This is gonna sound from very low to very high. We're gonna hear the frequencies open up as if we were doing a filter sweep. Maybe I should have that open a little sooner because that low end is pretty, not much going on there. So just one more time. That is exactly filter sweep. If we reverse it, so that's like closing it down on a high pass filter. And of course, these these are strays. You can get rid of them or move them in or whatever. But that's that's what makes this more interesting. Then when you pick, let's just choose something from the library here. Uh, for oh animal here, let's pick this dolphin one. And now when you look at this field of information, you know we've got low and high and various things going on. Let's see where we had a G6. Ah, playing on my little keyboard, so I'll find it eventually. So if you start to pick just bits and pieces of this frequency, and we talked about a filter sweep or a bandpass filter, well, imagine what this is doing, right? That's... That's like the world's craziest you know, bandpass filter. You can go blah, 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 make some crazy thing, and really, it's just changing to allow these frequencies through as as the as the time passes. Now, maybe that's not exactly what you wanted as it stands, but seriously, go try to program that in uh, a standard filter. <laughs> Impossible, if or very extremely hard, if possible at all. And that's when you start adding your. And adding those sorts of things is when it becomes interesting. Run it through uh, standard other filters and effects chains. Now let me show you one other way to approach spectral synthesis. And this time I'm going to use Camel Audio's Alchemy. What I have, standard patch loaded up. And if I switch to the first sound source, turn off additive, switch to the spectral engine, get white noise by default, I'm going to choose Resynthesize, and I've got nothing. I come into the editor on the spectral page. Uh, here we've got our loop points, just like uh, we were looking at in uh, Iris. But now we can actually paint. I'm going to set this to high. I've got a brush. Now watch this. If I do a sweep like this, and I move the loop point, we get a filter sweep. And that sweeps entirely through the range. And that's at maximum volume because what we're doing here, let me clear that, is the color is actually, like we talked about for amplitude, white is high and black is low. So if I'm right in the middle for color, that should be 50% uh, sound level relative to this one thing. So watch this, if I make, use choose some center frequencies so as not to be too harsh. If I make a series of just bars here of increasing color, I'm really increasing the amplitude of these. So you can paint with an array of interesting brushes. Like here's a spray brush. And if I choose, so it kind of gets some some blobs, and here's more of a circle, and I can change some heights, make whatever I want, and let's uh, use another, like a blurred edge brush to give a little bit of something else. And it sounds kind of harsh, but remember, if you leave this, you've got the full uh, synthesis engine here. If I turn down that filter, You know, and you can, uh, just like we did in, ha, watch, I can, I can use this. <laughs> so just like we did in Iris, we can start to activate effects and it starts to get much more interesting. Let's turn those back off. I'm going to, uh, I'll leave that a little off the high end there. So you get the idea. 
And another really, really cool thing that some programs, including Alchemy, can do, I clear this, is load an image. I've got a few chosen here. If I come to uh, Spectral, there we go, Spectral Source. I've got a crazy little image here I made in uh, a, an image editor. It's like you could use Photoshop for this. Loads it up. These are just some strange sound shapes I made. You can see there's going to be more low end, less high. They'll last a little while because they're thin. Let me import another one here. So there's sort of a filter sweep effect again. Uh, just a couple more to show you because they're kind of fun. That was that was number two. It was just kind of a splotchy image like that. Uh, this is the ubiquitous Photoshop clouds. Sounds as terrible as it looks. Yeah, don't like that at all. Here we go, four. This one has uh, some more motion going on in it. So you see, like, where it's white, you're going to be getting these flows of frequencies that move along and sweep. So you're going to get more complex uh, sound evolving when you have shapes like this. Let's look at another one that's a little blockier. This one here, as you see, I've, I've kind of got more squared off images. And this, uh, with the little chunky hard edges, is going to give us more of a sample and hold vibe. Because you're getting harsher, more sudden transitions between uh, time and frequency. So one last one here. This is kind of, uh, kind of more like bands and rows. So the frequencies are going to move around a little, but they're going to stay active longer. And this isn't the world's most amazing original sound, but remember, we've got this through the synthesis engine. So if we just start to add some modulation, let's turn that down ourselves a little open and close there. Turn these back on. I won't do too much on this because you know. You know how to do all this stuff. But we can set this up. So we're starting to get something that's a much cooler, more usable sound. And then we can come back to our spectral page and use these tools to edit it. Let's say I don't really like a lot of this high-end stuff. I'm going to get rid of some of that. So I can just set this to black for color, which means don't make any sound here, and start to paint this out. So you can hear I'm starting to remove some, but not all, of the high-end frequencies. You need to uh, replay the chord every time after a while. Hear your updated changes there. And that's better. And let's say I wanted to get rid of some of this low end too. And here I could choose something much more, say a smaller size brush. So I can just come in and get rid of some of that. And then choose to reshape a little bit of uh, some of these frequencies in here just kind of smooth some of that out a bit. So there you can adjust as you go. Uh, you know, this image looks pretty weird. Add low end back in if you'd like it. So you can uh, adjust as you go with a spectral image and totally make whatever you'd like as a sound source, which is pretty cool. So there's a little bit of motion for you, and I hope that is just an introduction so you can start to see cool stuff is possible. And when you look at uh, images like this, now you know exactly what you're looking at, and you can make some serious decisions about what artistic direction you'd like your sounds to take.